Nicole Zapala. She is 26 years old and a climate activist. She's the Vice President of Climate Action RI and an Environmental Coordinator of our Progressive Democrats. She sits on the Rhode Island Green New Deal Research Council and, and is a volunteer with Sunrise. So here's Nicole. Woo! So everyone, last time that we were gathered for a climate strike, we were part of a global movement of over a million and a half people. And since then, a report came out that one million species of plants and animals are at the verge of extinction. And now so much of that life does not have a voice. And so many humans have been, their voices have been taken from them by our society of oppression that doesn't want to face the results of greed and the conquesting and extraction of land and, and labor from all the living things on this earth. And as young people, we are some of the most impacted by the climate crisis, but we're not seeing the impacts as much now as we're seeing as as we're worried about our futures when we know that the impacts of the catastrophe are going to make it so that we're not going to have what we need to survive. And we're told that we're too young to understand how these things pan out. And it's almost as if they think that our forced education didn't teach us how to read, didn't teach us how to research and see that the last time that there was this much carbon in the atmosphere, giant armadillos were roaming the earth 4.5 million years ago. And the fact that climate change isn't taught in our schools doesn't mean that it doesn't keep us up at night. It doesn't mean that the horror is only in the daily news with people suffering, with so many people displaced and sick without air, without water across the globe and across our state. It's not as if we're not also outraged that our own government is suppressing scientific facts sacrificing human, human lives, and all the while claiming to care about youth in our futures. And they claim to care about the climate. They claim to care about the economy. They tell us that their efforts are in the process and that we should trust the process. They say that they're seeking to maintain the status quo, the glorified status quo under which the masses are suffering and our futures are being taken from us. <laughs> this glorified status quo this glorified process is what got us here in crisis mode. And these spineless politicians flaunt their embrace of the status quo right here in Rhode Island. Well, you know what the people of London did when their government was embracing the status quo? They shut the city down because they wanted it to be known that business as usual is disrupting survival, and that is more important. Woo -hoo! People are outraged by this inconvenience, by these acts of civil disobedience. But what's inconvenient is entire countries being drowned out by the rising seas, their plastic-filled shores growing smaller and people growing more and more scared. Communities are being displaced by drought, by famine, by wildfires. We are seeing fracking-induced earthquakes. We are seeing cancer sweep entire cities whose water sources are poisoned by mountaintop removal. We are seeing CEOs getting richer, investing in these fossil fuel projects, destroying indigenous ways of life, uprooting sacred land, making children into data who frequent the hospital for asthma attacks and respiratory disease. We are seeing regulations for corporations go down and prices go up. We are seeing employees of the richest companies die due to unjust working conditions. And even these Amazon workers went on strike to pressure Bezos into taking climate action. What we are up against is centuries of conquest, a culture of oppression that has one goal, and that goal is to convince us that business, of usual, business as usual will someday help us to conquest something of our own. But I know that all of you out there with the Lorax signs can see that with, without the climate, there will be nothing left. So please, keep on striking. Disrupt your classes, your jobs, the conversation at the dinner table. Let the people you love know that this loving disruption is just the beginning. That this disruption will become violent when we have lost all means of survival. But most importantly, let them know that they, that we, are the fabric of society. And that if we act in unity, we can make change. When cities shut down because the people have taken to the streets, 
The people have brought their parents, their siblings, their teachers, their neighbors, their friends. The government will see who really has the power.